हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल क्लिनिकल बायो केमिस्ट्री बाय डॉक्टर पी के प्रभाकर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ बायोइनफॉर्मेटिक्स दैट इज स्ट्रक्चरल क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन दिस इज अ काइंड ऑफ डाटा बेस फॉर प्रोटीन्स क्लासिफिकेशन डिपेंडिंग ऑन देयर सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर सो इन शॉर्ट फॉर्म वी आर गोइंग टू कॉल इट स्कोप द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ स्कोप इज स्ट्रक्चरल क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन सो basically we are knowing that uh, protein are having four different structural types uh, depending on their uh, three dimensional structure or sequences so when protein is having the normal protein amino acid sequence in the linear amino acid sequence that is called as primary structures of the protein where just sequence of amino acids will be there only peptide bond will be present there when this primary structure of protein is going to give you its Uh, either a uh, helix type of a structure that is called as alpha helix or it will be pleated uh, in the sheet like a structure that is called as beta pleated sheet so that is called as secondary structure in the secondary structure we are having uh, peptide bonds along with peptide bond we are also having hydrogen bond this secondary structures are going to give you three dimensional structure where other than this peptide bond and hydrogen bond there are some other bonds will be also there like disulfide bond will be there uh then electrostatic repulsion will be there van der waal forces will be there so number of other bonds also there and many peptides are going to combine together and give us the quaternary structure we know that proteins are normally functional in only primary tertiary and quaternary structure so actually what is this scope what is this structural classification of protein so it is a manual classification of protein structure uh which is normally based on two important characteristic feature one is similarity in the structure of the protein and similarity in the sequ- amino acid sequences these are the two basic criteria on which this scope works actually this is a secondary database what is secondary database the normally when we are talking about any kind of database we have two broad classes of databases primary and secondary primary means when where directly Uh, the raw data will be submitted by the researcher by the scientist into any database that is called as primary database and when we are going to use the information available on the primary database and fetch some kind of analytical uh, informations analysis like functional sequence their function then we are calling it secondary structure secondary databases so a scope is a secondary database which normally gets all the informations all the resources from the pdb website protein data bank uh, so this is a secondary database this scope normally gives us a specific information related to the evolutionary relationship among the proteins evolutionary relationship means from what is the about the origin and the development and the changes if we are having a protein uh, which is having the same shape but have the very little sequence or functional similarity shape is very same but function or their sequence is minute very minutely similar are placed in the different superfamily and it is thought that they have a distinct ancestor means when a protein you are having which is have the same shape similar shape but sequence or the functions are very less similar we are going to keep them in dis- di- uh, different super family and it is thought that they are having a far ancestor they are originated from the very far ancestor similarly if protein will have the same shape but some similarity in the sequence or in the functions are placed in the family and assume that they have a close ancestor so these are the two important things in this case when fun- shape are, are same and the function and sequence are similar we are thinking that they have a distant ancestor and when same shape but very little similarity we are going to thought that they have a closer ancestor originally in the first time this scope was created in 1994 uh, in the center of protein engineering that is cpe and laboratory of molecular uh, biology now uh, currently it is maintained by the alexi g uh, murgin in his colleagues in the Uh, center for protein engineering until its closure in 2010 and now it is maintained by laboratory of molecular biology lmb in england now when we are talking about the classification obviously there will be different hierarchy of the classes different uh, means uh, groupings 
so in the uh, scope we are having different hierarchy what are the hierarchical organizations so the first proteins are having the divided into the different class then those classes are divided into folds so in one class we have many folds then folds are divided into super family super family divided into family family divided into protein domains protein domains divided into species and then we are having domain so these are the different hierarchy of the proteins we will see uh, each one what is this uh, different terms like this is the uh, some of the classes we are talking about so here we are having a scope that is the root of the means we are going to a scheme that is the uh, structural classification of proteins where we have many classes here you are going to see only four classes what are those classes it is alpha beta alpha or beta and alpha and beta so this is called as class so these four classes we are talking here but roughly we are having 11 classes here in the scope i will show you all the 11 classes also in each class we are having many folds so here i am not talking about all the classes here we are i am going to show you only one class that is alpha or beta where three important folds are shown here that is rossmann fold flavodoxin like and alpha beta barrel so in this H folds we are having many superfamily like in alpha beta barrel uh, we are having many superfamily like tim barrel uh, trp biosynthesis glycosyl uh, transferase rubisco these are superfamily in each superfamily we are having many family family we are having many proteins and these proteins have come from many species and then we are having many specific proteins now in this case when you are coming from the lower side to the higher side like in this direction there they are classic groups under on the structure based grouping so this is this scheme is on a structure based grouping and when we are coming down side from a higher hierarchy to the lower hierarchy it is evolution based grouping so these are some of the classes now whatever we have seen uh, so first uh, scope first hierarchical scheme was the class where we are going to talk about the types of fold how many different types of fold some of the example is beta sheet then we are having folds where we are talking about the different shapes or domain of within a class that is specifically topo topology then we are having super family where we are talking about the domain in a folds are grouped with into super family where normally we are talking about the at least a di distinct common ancestor like a structural homology like different organs which is uh, originating from the same origin same place but function they are performing the different functions so a structural homology information we are getting from the super family similarly uh, we are having family where we are getting information about the recent common ancestor that is called a sequence homology means sequence similarity then we are having protein domain where normally we are getting information about the functional identity identity or identical uh, information unique sequences we are getting information by the species domain there we are talking about the part of a specific protein it can be uh, part of protein or it can be entire protein now these are the different hierarchy so these hierarchy if you go to the scope website I will take you to a scope website on there also we will see it how, what are the different information available on the uh, scope website so this is the basic picture of a scope website now here the, you can see there are two different types of a scope is available one is a scope 1.75 this is the current version of a scope which is we are having and second one is a scope 2 prototype so this is the original one uh, which after many updates currently this is a scope 1.75 is there so there we will have 11 different classes of proteins so either directly you can search in this box with the protein name or protein pdb id or directly you can go to the scope 1.75 click here and you can go there you can see the different classes that is one thing if you go to the scope 2 their proteins have been grouped on different criteria I will show you that one also. So later on, I am coming to the this scope website. So these are the total eleven classes we are having for proteins, which is mainly classified on the basis of their secondary structure, that is, alpha helix and beta pleated sheet. Now these eleven classes are all alpha proteins, all beta proteins, 
alpha and or beta al this is this should be or alpha or beta alpha and beta multi domain proteins membrane and cell surface proteins small proteins coiled proteins low resolution protein structure peptides and designated peptides so these all 11 classes we are going to see there but among all these four, 11 classes first four classes are little bit more important where maximum proteins falls in that category there are some class lower classes which is not a true not a true class like you can see this peptide which is not a true class uh, low resolution protein structure that is not a true class coiled coil this is not a true class uh, so there are many classes uh, is the group there but they are not exactly a true class there so what are the different classes we are having these are the total 11 class we had what information we are getting there uh, so first four we are going to see in the details along with the structures like first all alpha proteins there you will have mainly proteins contains only alpha helix sequences alpha helix type of secondary structure when we are talking about all beta proteins their proteins have only beta structures in alpha or beta there we are having alpha and beta alternatively we are going to have in the means beta alpha beta like that one alpha and beta their alpha beta normally going to form a separate bundles so we are going to see different uh, class in the details last like this one this one this one this one these are not a true class so that's why we will not talk about too much about that one so the first class we are having that is called as all alpha proteins when we are talking about all alpha proteins that is a secondary structure this is composed entirely of alpha helix so normally on this in this type of proteins you don't have any kind of beta sheets even in some cases if beta sheets are there they will be at the periphery but not in the main protein components main protein structures like you can see here some of the examples are bromo domain globin fold and hemo uh, homo domain folds like this is the example of bromo domain here you can see almost all the proteins are composed of only alpha helix no beta sheets are there in this case also you have only alpha helix so no beta sheets are there that's they these are called as all alpha proteins this is one class we have second class that is called as all beta proteins where mainly protein contains beta sheets only you don't you will not able to find any alpha helix in this case but if in certain cases if alpha helix is there you can find those at the periphery only some of the examples are sh3 domain beta propeller domain and immunoglobulin folds here two of the example are this is the beta propeller where normally proteins are arranged among around a hypothetical axis in the propeller forms you can see here almost all the proteins these are beta sheets only so you cannot find any alpha helix in this case where we are talking about immunoglobulin domain you can find main protein part is only composed of beta helix no uh, sorry beta uh, uh, pleated sheet no alpha helix but if you are going to have some alpha helix that will be at the periphery only not in the main protein component so normally you don't have alpha helix but if in any case if you are having it will be only at the peripheral portion periphery so that is called as all beta proteins next class we are having alpha or beta proteins here you are going to have alpha and beta are arranged alternatively and whenever beta sheets will be there they are mostly parallel in the nature so alpha and beta are par alternatively arranged one by one like if you see in this case uh, from here this protein starts so this is beta sheets then alpha helix then again beta sheets then alpha helix then beta sheet then alpha helix then beta sheet so alpha and beta are alternatively arranged and whenever beta will be there they will be anti parallel uh, they will be parallel in the nature similarly in this case also we can see uh, uh, this is the barrel shape structure this is called as team barrel so in this case uh, this is a cylindrical type of a structure so where alpha and beta helix are uh, alternatively arranged and beta will be in the parallel in the nature this is called as alpha or beta where alternative alpha and beta helix will be there and beta will be in the parallel nature parallel thing then uh, we are going to have 
alpha and beta uh, proteins where alpha and beta are going to uh, this is composed of both alpha and beta will be there but separately along the backbone here it is not alternatively arranged they are going to form a separate bundles and whenever beta will be there they will be mostly anti parallel in nature compared to the alpha or beta in alpha or beta we had parallel here it is anti parallel in nature that you can see here so they are separately arranged like alternative uh, means uh, one by one uh, one alpha one beta like that one we don't have any structure like that one and they are in anti parallel in nature so these are the four important classes we are having for proteins like mm, alpha all alpha all beta alpha or beta and alpha and beta so if you'll see the total classes so these are the total 11 classes we are having in each class we are having many folds so i have told you class is divided into different folds so in all alpha proteins we are having total 284 different type of folds in each fold we are having many super family so total super family we are having 507 so this is the total number uh, probably uh, we are no one is expecting you to remember all these uh, numbers but this is just for information that we are having every class is divided into many folds folds divided into super family super family have many families there are some additional class also we are having like uh, membrane protein we have seen it so membrane proteins normally interact with the biological membranes it will be uh, associated with the membranes either it will be as a integrate integral part uh, integrated protein or it will be peripheral proteins so either by inserting into it or being tethered uh, by a covalently attached lipid then some types some common types of protein along with soluble uh, globular proteins uh, fibrous proteins or uh, disordered proteins most of the cases these membrane proteins are the target for modern medicine either as a receptor or a ligands or uh, different type of things either in the diagnostic purpose or for therapeutic purpose these membrane proteins are the target for the different medicines it is estimated that 20 to 30 percent of all the genes in most genome encodes membrane protein so that is another one class another class is that is called as a small protein a small protein typically have the little similar uh, secondary structure and often contains multiple disulfide bonds means they will have more cysteine amino acids then we are having coiled coiled protein this is not a true uh, class i have told you already coiled coiled proteins forms long insoluble fiber involved in the extracellular matrix they there are many scalar superfamily including keratin collagen elastin and fibroids the roles of such proteins includes protection and support forming connective tissue tendons bone matrices and muscle fibers some other additional classes are uh, design proteins this is a result of the rational design and do not exist in the nature protein can de uh, design from the scratch either from the new source from the zeros you are going to synthesize that is called as de novo synthesis de novo design or by making calculated variations on a known protein structure and its sequence that is called as protein redesign next we are having intrin uh, intrinsically uh, disordered proteins intrinsically disordered proteins lack a fixed or ordered three dimensional structures these proteins cover a spectrum of states from fully unstructured or partially structured and into a random coil so these are the rough of the some of the important additional classes which is not exactly a true class but because they have classified onto the scope websites that's why we are talking about now i am taking taking you to the scope website so there we will see uh, how this structure scope website works so just if you go to uh, google and just search in the google's scope you will get the first thing that is the structural classification of proteins just click on this one and you will get a uh, go to the scope home page on this scope home page i have already told you there are two different databases we are having a scope 1.75 and a scope 2 prototype if you can do one thing you can directly go here and you can search any proteins directly by their names or pdb id that is one way by which we can go there uh, here also you can search it these are some of the classes here already given that is all alpha proteins all beta proteins alpha and beta or alpha and beta otherwise you can do one thing you can go to the if you go to the about you can uh, read about the information about the family super family folds and other things if otherwise if i will go to home i can directly take it to the scope 1.75 
and I can click here I can go to the scope to prototype so one by one we are going to see it if you are going to scope 1.75 this is the oldest version so 1.75 release of scope uh, which has been released in June 29 uh, there we are having number of things uh, either directly you can search the proteins or you can go one by one so I have clicked on the top of the hierarchy here we are having all the 11 classes if you click on any of the class you can go to the their folds because I have told you scope this root is a scope and there we are having classes so all alpha proteins are the class there we are having folds if you go and see total we are having 284 or more than 284 folds so directly you can search your proteins here or you can go one by one if you know the classification I have clicked on the fold uh, it will take me to the super family so there are two super family here if I will click on any super family I can go to the family if I will click on family I will go to the uh, next hierarchy that is protein domains I can click on protein domains I can go to the further so this is how we can enter into the different uh, protein and go to the proteins of uh, one by one hierarchy error schemes second website we are having that is called as scope 2 website here we are having number of informations uh, different descriptions uh, I have already told you that this is maintained by laboratory of uh, molecular medicines after 2010 now if we we'll go from here and we will browse it there we are having many different types of classification schemes so you can go up you have uh, protein relationship hyper family super family family protein species you can go to the structural class there we are having many different all the classes like all alpha proteins all beta proteins alpha or beta alpha and beta small proteins if you we'll go to protein types there you have a structural classification of proteins like globular membrane fibrous and other things so you can click on these things and you can get your informations whatever you want uh, whatever your desired information will be there so till you are going to do by yourself you will not get all the informations on the scope so you need to perform by yourself so this is all about the scope website hope uh, it will be clear to you uh, it is uh, request you to go to the scope website and do by yourself whenever you have any question any confusion you can ask you can write in the comment box if you are not subscribed my channel you can subscribe it uh, thank you very much